For over 20 years, Slipknot has been producing some of the best hard rock and heavy metal music out there. Today we are going to look at their recently released video called Unsainted. If you haven't seen it, go check it out before you watch this video. We're going to see how they do some of those effects. Let's hit that bumper. I'm going to go through a few of the effects from this Slipknot video. Most of them are fairly easy, so just stick with me and we'll get through them. I'm going to start off with this effect that you see through many of the parts of the video. You see the band member with some sort of video clip being overlaid on top of them and a weird kaleidoscopy kind of background. First thing I want to do is click into a new composition and set up a 1080p timeline with a frame rate of 24 frames a second. I always like to have the background colors in my compositions as black. Now I'm going to the file menu and clicking save so that way we know exactly where everything in our project is being saved at. Now I right click inside the project panel and hover over import and click on file. Then I click on the files I want for this project. For this particular effect I'm going to need three different video clips. I'm going to create the background first. So I click and drag the clip I want to make my background out of and drop it into the timeline. Making this background is incredibly simple, one of the easier things we'll be doing today. As usual all my clips are in 4K so I need to resize this one by clicking S on my keyboard and scaling it down to 50%. Now I want to give a slight grade to this log image, so first I use a curves effect and make a nice S curve to get good contrast. Now I'm adding some saturation and I set the saturation level to 64. Now what we want to do is move this clip so it is only in the top half of our frame. The easiest way to do that is to hit P for position on our keyboard and turning it to zero in the Y coordinate. Now I click Ctrl D to duplicate the image and then right click that image, hover over transform and click flip vertical. Then I slide the Y coordinate over until it lines up with where I want it to be. I'm lowering the resolution right now just to make it easier to play back, but it's not going to affect anything in our final render. Now you can see that weird kaleidoscopy background. You can also break the image into four sections to get an even trippier background like this shot of the video. I'm cutting the length of each clip down because it doesn't need to be that long. I then click both layers and right click. Then I go to pre-compose and I title the new composition BG, BG obviously standing for background. Then I click the I next to the layer to temporarily turn it off. Next I drag footage of me looking unnecessarily angry I might say in front of a white background into the composition. I didn't have a slipknot mask just lying around so I guess my mug trying to look scary is uh, you know the next best thing. <laughs> I find where I want the clip to start then I trim the beginning off up to that point and drag the clip to the beginning of the timeline. Then I find where I want the clip to end and trim everything behind that off. Now I want to make everything in this clip black or white. No color, no gray, just black or white. To do that I first add a curves effects. I bring the highlights up a bit and really bring down the shadows. Then I add a saturation effect and remove all saturation effectively removing all the colors. I now put on a levels effect and slide this little triangle to the right until everything on me including the white lettering of my shirt is pitch black. Now I need to add the white back in so I turn down the input white to 0.8. Now we can see a little bit of that lettering on my shirt again so I turn the output black down to minus 0.17 and to make the white whiter we turn the output white up to 1.83. Now everything is absolute white or absolute black. It should be noted in the video that not everything in this part of the process was either white or black in that video and so the effect came through at different layers but for today's simplicity I'm just making everything either white or black. And ideally I should have used some sort of scopes just to make sure I was at absolute white or black but I didn't do it and I don't have time to go redo it. Effectively what we did is made a cutout of our subject called a luma mat and we didn't even have to mess around with rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is when you have to trace something with points for every frame, 24 frames for every second. So if you just have a 10 seconds clip, that's 240 frames that you have to go out and cut out and we don't have to do any of that and that's terrific because I hate rotoscoping. So we are going to tell After Effects to use this layer as a template and take everything in our layer that is white and get rid of it and keep everything in the black or vice versa. To do that I click Ctrl D to duplicate my layer. Then I delete all of the effects in the bottom layers panel. Now we go into the track mat area and click on where it says none and change that to luma inverted mat, meaning I want to use our cookie cutter and keep the stuff in the black area. 
Now I look all washed out because it's a log image, so I add a curves effect and make that nice trademark S curve to get nice contrast. Then I add some saturation. Now I highlight both clips and pre-compose them together. I'm going to name this comp Me Cut Out because that's what it is, just Me Cut Out. Now this looks pretty good so far, but you can kind of see a light white halo around my head and body. We don't want that. So I'm going to add what is called a matte choker to it, which does exactly what it sounds like. It chokes the matte down to make it smaller. Even the defaults make this look better, but I want to tweak it just a little bit. So I change the geometric softness to 5, choke 1 to 100, and gray level softness to 25. Now the halo's gone! Okay, let's turn off this layer we just created by hitting the little eyeball next to the layer, so we don't see it right now. So I should have done this part before I pre-composed everything, but I didn't. So let's move forward. I'm going back into the me cutout comp so I can locate the cookie cutter layer, which I should have named in this comp just cookie cutter layer, but I didn't. So we click on it and hit control C to copy it. I then go back into the main composition and paste it by clicking control V, making sure it is the very top layer and making sure the background layer is on the very bottom. Where these layers are stacked actually matters. The cookie cutter layer is turned off because we turned it off in the composition. So nothing's happening right now. So we need to turn it back on by hitting that little eye box. Now our cookie cutter luma mat layer is back on. I grab my final clip and drag it below the luma mat. I go back into the track mat area and click luma inverted mask again. And now we have a cutout of that clip. I want to make this log clip look a little better. So I add curves effect to it and get a little contrast. But I don't need any more saturation on this clip. I click on the top two layers, right click on them, and pre-compose them, calling the comp Inner Mask. Now I turn all the layers back on by clicking the eye next to each layer. Obviously right now you can't see the middle layer. So we go into the blending mode of the Inner Mask layer and change it to screen. Now you can see me, but not all that well. First things first, we forgot to get rid of that little halo in the Inner Mask composition. So I'm going to fix that first by copying the matte choker from the other layer, clicking Control C and pasting it into this composition by hitting Control V. Now I'm going to select the inner mask composition and click T for opacity and turn it down all the way to 25%. And because it's blended with screen mode, you can see my face better, but can see the other layer better in the blacks more. Now I select all three compositions, right click and pre-compose them all together, calling it main comp. Now we're gonna make like a push in or a zoom effect on the whole composition. So I hit P for position and set a keyframe. Then I hit S for scale and add a keyframe. Then I go to the end of the clip and change the scale to 119%. Then I click both keyframes and click F9 to easy ease them. Easy ease is basically meaning it eases in and out so it's not just a static movement. It speeds up and slows down and slows into each keyframe. And now this effect's done. I think it looks pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is this blur and warp effect here. The first thing you need to do before effects is have your camera pushing in or zooming in on whatever you're shooting. Now we get it into After Effects, drag your clip into the timeline and trim your clip up to start where you want it to. Now I'm adding a curves effect and making a contrasty S curve. Now I'm adding some saturation in my log footage to make the clip look nice. And because I forgot to resize the clip in the first place, I am resizing it now. So I hit S for scale and scale it down to 50%. Now I'm going to go to the layer drop down, hover over new, and I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Then I make a mask around the part of the clip that I don't want deformed. For me, that's just a circle roughly in the center of my clip. Then I go into the mask area of my adjustment layer and where it says add, I change it to say subtract. Now I'm going to apply a CC radial blur effect. Then I change the blur type to straight zoom. I make sure I'm at the beginning of the timeline of the clip, and then I change the amount to 20 and make a keyframe by clicking the little watch next to amount. I then scrub through to the end of the clip on my timeline and change the amount to 107. I click F for feather and feather out the mask 298 pixels. Now we're starting to get the look we want, but we're still not getting that stretching effect. I click on the icon at the top that looks like a thumbtack, which activates what's called the puppet tool. I make sure that I'm on the footage layer and add a puppet point in the area of each corner of the frame. Now because I don't want the inner part distorted too much, I make a circle of pinpoints surrounding the mask. I go back into the adjustment layer and check all of our pins to make sure there's a keyframe that's been created for them at the beginning of the timeline. 
I then scrub to the end of the timeline and take each corner puppet point and stretch the edge out of frame. And that's basically it. We get an effect that looks like this. There's probably an easier and more streamlined way to do this, but this is the first thing that came to my mind. It's kind of a brute force way to get that effect done. The rest of the effects are I'm not really going to do tutorials for because they're all basically just messing around with Red Giant Universe plugins. Most commonly the Chromatic Aberration plugin. But to move on, the next effect we're going to do is this one where the color separates and grows and is bigger than the rest of the person. So let's look at the footage. Wow. What's going on with the look on my face there? Oh, wow. Anyways, to do this effect, we need to go into Red Giant Universe's Chromatic Aberration effect. At the beginning of the timeline, I make a keyframe on the red scale. I then move forward in the timeline where I want the color to stop growing and raise the red scale to 1.490. Now I right-click the layer and pre-compose it. I hit S for scale and hit the stopwatch to make a keyframe. I then move ahead and change the scale value to 69%. I highlight both keyframes and hit F9 to turn on Easy Ease. I then apply a curves effect and move it above the chromatic aberration effect. That way it's applying it before the chromatic aberration. I lower the highlights a touch and the shadows quite a bit. And that's basically the easiest way to do this effect. Now I realize some of you probably don't have Red Giant Universe. It's a great, powerful tool for After Effects that costs either $30 a month or $200 a year. But I get that some of you can't afford to do that. So I'm going to show you for this effect, another way to kind of do it without using a plugin. I start out with a curves effect to make my log footage look contrasty. I then add a hue saturation effect and turn the saturation up. Now I click Control D to duplicate the footage. On the bottom layer, I delete the curves and the saturation effects. I then add another curves to it and click into the red channel. I keep the highlights basically where they are and try to lift everything else. Then I go into the green channel and keep the highlights again where they are, but drop everything else. I do the same thing as I did with the green channel to the blue channel, and now I have a very red version of myself. I then go into the track mat and click on luma mat. I click S for scale and make a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline. Then I scrub ahead to the timeline where I want the growing to be done and raise the scale to 64%. I then click into the top layer and take the reds down and the mids and shadows and the curves effect. Then I right click both layers to pre-compose them together. I add a levels effect to the composition and bring up the output white to 3.04. I then add an exposure effect onto it and take the exposure down to negative 1.19. And now we have this. It's not the exact same image, but it will do in a pinch. Now the last thing I want to show you is just another thing that's in Red Giant Universe that I think they used on this video. I'm trimming down the layer to where I want to be so that way you can't steal all my awesome dance moves. Then I drag this bar to match the length of the footage. Right click on that bar and select Trim Comp to Work Area. Now when it renders, it will only render in that area. You don't have to worry about cutting out all that other stuff. I'm going to use their VHS plugin. I disable the tape damage so there's no VHS tracking lines because there's none in the video. Then I go down to post noise and bring it up to 8.0. And that's basically it. I mean, I'm sorry, there's not really any way I can teach how to dance with this much style and grace because it's just something you're born with. You can either do it or you can't. I really, it's not something I can teach. And that's all I have for you guys today. Today was kind of an After Effects mashup video. And that's why I love recreating music videos. It gives you a chance to check out different effects. Now, even though a lot of this stuff was pretty simple, I went through it pretty quickly and there was a lot to go through. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you like this video or just like my Red Hot Dance moves, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like filmmaking tutorials or if you like After Effects tutorials, hit that subscribe button. Or that bell that I found out what it does. It uh, basically does what the subscribe button used to do. I don't know why they have two buttons. Uh, this, this platform can get kind of confusing, so let's just show them. It's not a competition. Let's all rise in this business together. See you guys next time.